Okay, let's say I'm trying to measure the density of a ball. It's mass divided by the volume, in this case, the volume of sphere. So I measure the mass and the radius of the sphere. Okay, so to calculate the density, I'd use the mass as the m, 0 0.32, and I'd use 4 centimeters, but I had to convert that into meters first, so divide by 100. And when I put that into the equation, you get 9,500 kilograms per meters cubed. Okay, what about the absolute uncertainty in this though? So how do I figure that out, given using the 0 0.01 here and the 0 0.1 here? Okay, well, there's a set of rules which we need to use. I'm going to go to them one by one. Okay, the original length of a spring is 5.0 plus or minus 0 0.1 centimeter. The final length of the spring is 7.2 plus or minus 0 0.1 centimeter. Calculate the extension uh, with the absolute uncertainty. Okay, to calculate extension, we'd have to subtract them. Okay, we'd have to find length minus the original length, which gives me 2.2 centimeters. Now I want to find the absolute uncertainty in this extension here. So it turns out when you're adding or subtracting quantities with uncertainty in them, all you do is add the absolute uncertainties. So this, uh, the absolute uncertainty is 0 0.1 and 0 0.1 here. So I'm going to add them together. So the absolute uncertainty in the extension is going to be plus or minus 0 0.2. So this is how I write my final answer to, same, uh, to two same figures because these are to two same figures and to the same number of decimal places. Okay, the voltage across the resistor is 15.2 plus or minus 0.1 volts. The current through the resistor is 0.51 plus or minus 0.01 amps. Calculate the power of the resistor with the absolute uncertainty. So firstly, power is current times voltage. So I'm going to just multiply those two together and I've got my power already. So what about the absolute uncertainty in this power though? So because we're multiplying numbers together, in fact, even if I was dividing, what I have to do is I have to add the percentage uncertainties. So I'm going to start off by working out the percentage uncertainty in the voltage and the current. So the percentage uncertainty in the voltage is 0.658% and then the current is 1.961%. Now, Because you're dividing these two, the voltage and the current, I'm oh, sorry, you're multiplying them. It doesn't matter if you're dividing, you'd still add the percentage uncertainty. So the total percentage uncertainty in the power is actually the sum of those two, 2.619%. Now that I have the percentage uncertainty in the power and the power, to work out the absolute uncertainty, all I have to do is work out 2.619% of 7.752. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And that means that 2.619% of 7.752 is 0 0.203. So if my final answer is 7.8% plus or minus um, 0 0.2 watts. So I've given them to, uh, two same figures because this is two same figures here and this is three same figures and I can't be more precise than my least precise measurement. And I've finally given my absolute uncertainty to the same number of decimal place as my measurement itself. Okay, the radius of a circle is 15 plus or minus one millimeter. Calculate the circumference of the circle with the absolute uncertainty. So the circumference is 2 pi r, so I'm going to go ahead and work that out. Okay, so the issue with working out the absolute uncertainty here is that I'm multiplying by some constants. Okay, the constants don't have any uncertainty. So it turns out when you multiply or divide by a number with no uncertainty, the percentage uncertainty remains unchanged. This doesn't mean the absolute uncertainty doesn't change. It does. Okay, so first let's work out the percentage uncertainty in r, the radius. Okay, that's 6.67 percent okay so because we multiply by constants which don't have any uncertainty the percentage uncertainty in the circumference is going to be the exact same 6.67 percent so now all i need to work out the absolute uncertainty is work out 6.67 percent of 94.2825 sorry okay so that gives me 6.28 and my final answer is given to two single figures here and the same number of decimal places with my absolute uncertainty 94 plus or minus 6 watts Okay, the radius of a circle is 6.0 plus or minus 0 0.1 centimeter. Calculate the area of the circle with the absolute uncertainty. So area of a circle is pi r squared, so I'm going to go ahead and work that out. So the issue with working out the absolute uncertainty here is that you've got a squared there, and also you multiply by a constant as well. So it turns out when you're squaring something or when you're multiplying by something by a certain power, let's say you multiply by power of n, you have to multiply the percentage uncertainty by the modulus of n. By the modulus, these lines here represent the fact that if it was negative 2, for example, I would still multiply by 2. Or if it was negative half, I would still multiply by a half. Okay, so the, the next sign doesn't matter. Okay, so now that I worked out the area, I'm going to work out the percentage and set in the radius. Okay, so now because the radius is being squared, I need to multiply by 2. Okay, so 
there you go because it's squared if it was cubed it would be three so the total percentage answer in the r, r squared is 3.3 percent then that's being multiplied by pi which is a constant and we saw in the last question that multiplied by a constant doesn't affect the percentage uncertainty so the total uh, uncertainty in the area is still 3.3 um, percent okay now that we just need to work out 3.3 percent of our actual area to figure out the absolute uncertainty okay so 3.33 percent of uh, 113.1 is plus or minus 3.37 so our final answer is given to two same figures here okay and the same number of decimal places is 110 plus or minus uh, 4. Okay, to summarize, when you're adding or subtracting two things with uncertainty in them, you just add the absolute uncertainties. When you're multiplying or dividing two th things with uncertainty in them, you just add the percentage uncertainties. When you're multiplying or dividing by a constant which has no uncertainty, the, absolute, uh, the percentage uncertainty remains unchanged. However, the absolute uncertainty can change. Okay, when you're raising a number, uh, uh, and on something with uncertainty to the power of n, you multiply the percentage uncertainty by the modulus of n. By the modulus of n, I mean the positive version of that number. We return to our original example where we're trying to find the density of a ball. We've got the mass of the ball and we've got the diameter. So I'm going to start off by turning that diameter into a radius. So that's in meters as well, so 0 0.02 meters. Okay, then I can calculate the density using mass of volume and the volume is 4 pi r cubed because it's the sphere putting that number is in we've got the density here now the hard bit which is find the absolute uncertainty now there's a lot of operations going on here there's dividing and then there's raising something to the power and there's some constants so i'm going to remind myself of the rules i'm going to start off by working out the percentage uncertainty in everything i have so i've got the mass and the radius there okay so firstly you need to notice that the radius is being cubed okay so that means i need to use this rule here okay so i'm going to multiply the percentage uncertainty of the radius by three Okay, so 7.5 percent now then is being multiplied by some constants okay now the constants do not affect the percentage uncertainty so that doesn't matter then finally we're doing the mass divided by the volume okay so that means i need to add the percentage uncertainty according to this rule here okay so the total percentage uncertainty will just be the sum of the percentage uncertainty in the mass and the percentage uncertainty in the volume which is the same as that of the r cubed okay now i just need to work out 10.6 percent of this doing that and then making sure i'm giving the final answer to two same figures and to the same number of decimal places